It's all very good and well being really, really strong or really, really explosive or having fantastic endurance. But the question is, what can you actually do with all that performance? Because on their own, being really strong or having great endurance, they don't actually guarantee that you're gonna be much use at anything. When it comes to going to the gym and weight training, it's not just the fact that you're getting stronger that's useful. Arguably what's more useful is the fact that you're learning how to pick things up off the ground in a safe manner. You're learning how to deadlift, how to squat, and this translates into less chance of injury when you're lifting stuff off the ground in real life, as well as being more generally useful. But there are many other skills that go beyond just lifting stuff. You have all this performance now, you've worked on getting fitter, so you need to learn how to translate that into dynamic performance that can adapt to a range of different situations. Things like being able to climb or being able to run faster or jump higher. Being really, really fit doesn't mean you're gonna be able to do an obstacle course. So to me, if you're going to the lengths of building all of this potential, you need to learn how to actually use it by developing some cool skills, whether it's rolls, climbs, sprints, etc. And at the same time, this is also exceptionally good for your body. It teaches you how to move your body in a range of different ways. The very act of learning is exceptionally good for the body. It keeps your brain in a plastic state. It keeps you in a learning state so that it's easier to learn other new skills and so that you don't get stuck in your ways. So this is something that people like Ido Portal and the movement training crowd really understand. They talk not about training for strength and size, but training for movements, training for skills. They see that as more important. I think this is excellent and it's one of the best things to come from movement training, but I do think that they actually in some ways limit themselves in terms of what they explore. Typically with these guys, you see crawls, you see movements from martial arts, often quite slow, Tai Chi type movements, capoeira. What you don't see as much is sprinting or throwing things or weightlifting because these are skills as well, athletic abilities or the more explosive martial arts, martial arts tricking. I think we can draw from a much wider range of not just movements, but different capacities of the body, whether that's endurance or explosiveness, even brain function. So with all that in mind, I've created a list here of some of the best movements I think that you can start working on, some of the best skills you can start working on to become a more well-rounded athlete, to keep your brain in that learning state and to actually put some of that physical performance that you've been developing into good use. If you just pick a couple of these to start working on, I think you're gonna see that it really expands your horizons in terms of what training can encompass and what your body can do. And because this is the Bioneer and I like to get a bit nerdy here on the channel, I've chosen these particular skills because I think they would make you into something of an urban ninja. These are the kind of skills that in a dystopian cyberpunk future would help you to survive and thrive. And at the same time, these are relatively achievable skills and movements that will teach you more about your body, expand your horizons and make you a more capable and a more dynamic athlete. And the first is the roll, the breakfall or the parkour roll, PK roll. This is a movement that allows you to absorb impact from a fall and turn it into a neat roll that doesn't cause you any injury. This is great as an urban ninja because it lets you jump down from a height without injuring yourself, lets you move between levels. At the same time though, it's also important for everyday use because if you trip or if you have a bike accident, then being able to land in a roll and not hurt yourself is huge. It also allows you to practice other skills like flips, like handstands without fear of being hurt. This is an asset to everyone and it could avoid some serious injuries and it's not that difficult to pick up and learn. And as Grant talked about in a recent video on this channel, it's also a great tool for teaching you how to roll your body and developing some proprioception in a relatively safe manner. The parkour roll and the breakfall from martial arts are slightly different, but they serve a very similar function. If you want to learn more about the parkour roll, then Liam recently made a great guide to training parkour at home. We talked about this. If you want to learn more about the breakfall and the dive roll, then Grant also made a video on that, which is also available on this channel. I'll put links to all of these in the description down below and resources where you can learn how to develop these skills. The next one is something completely different. It's the handstand. Now the handstand on its own isn't the most useful movement, you know, doesn't make you into an urban ninja quite so much, although doing a handstand from a cool location is pretty cool. What the handstand is though, is a fantastic education in movement. You learn so much about your body from doing handstands. To be able to do a proper handstand, you'll need to develop shoulder mobility, proprioception, core strength, stronger wrists, great wrist mobility. And when it comes to triggering plasticity in the brain, there are a few things better than completely inverting your body and learning how to sense where it is in space from that position. Once you get good at the handstands, not only can they be used for beautiful displays of human performance, but they can also turn your body into a mobile gym so that you can get a great workout in wherever you are. They're infinitely progressible. 
And once again, there's content on this channel if you want to learn how to handstand. Liam just created a tutorial on how to handstand, so I'll leave a link to that in the description down below as well. Next up is the crawl. The crawl is a movement that all of us pretty much learn during infancy, although some kids actually do skip the crawling stage, go straight to walking, but most of us learn to crawl. And this is great for developing that contralateral proprioception, where you're moving one side of the body independently from the other side of the body. This translates to better performance, better movement, and a whole host of different areas, because that's how we run, that's how we walk, that's how we throw and punch. This is something that my daughter's experiencing at the moment, actually, as she's learning how to swim, and the thing she's finding most difficult is coordinating her arms and legs at the moment at the same time. So crawling can help you with that, can help you to tie the whole body together at the same time. It's a great low impact way to build a little bit of strength, some endurance. There are lots of different types of crawl. You can bear crawl along a beam if you want to work on your balance. And it is also a practical movement for crawling under low passes or crawling along things, like I said, keeping your line of sight low if you're trying to be stealthy. So again, an important one if you want to be an urban ninja. And it's no surprise that this is practiced in a host of martial arts, by military personnel and in parkour. I've made a video on crawling, so I'll leave a link to that one in the description. You guessed it down below. Next up is sprinting. Sprinting is an exceptionally important skill. It's something that all of us should be able to do it's how we move our body most quickly from point A to point B on land. Sprinting, however, is very high impact, very high exertion. And as such, as we get older, many of us stop doing it and many of us lose the ability to do it. I think we want to build up to that as much as possible. If sprinting's too full on right now, start with a light jog and then build up to that sprint. Sprinting is one of the most anabolic exercises you can do. It's fantastic for building stronger legs, generally great physique. It's one of the best ways to massively ramp up the metabolism to burn a bunch of calories quickly. And of course, it's extremely useful in real life, whether you need to run for the bus, whether you need to run away from somebody, whether you need to catch your dog who's escaped. And sprinting is also necessary for a bunch of other skills like the long jump, so yeah, you need to sprint. I don't have a video dedicated to sprinting on the channel right now. I do have a video on running faster that's really, really old, but I'm also making one on sprinting, which should be coming soon, so stay tuned for that. Subscribe if you wanna make sure you don't miss it. Next up is the cross punch. Now you might be a pacifist and think you don't need to learn how to punch and I completely understand. However, being able to punch is a great way to learn how to generate the maximum amount of power from your body. Learn how to throw a punch and you learn how to rotate your body, how to relax and then contract at the moment of impact. You have to throw your hips, how to throw your shoulders into the punch. This is something you can perfect endlessly. You're never finished. It's a really great way to see what your body is capable of. And I think it's a beautiful movement. I love seeing what the body's capable of and watching someone deliver a powerful punch is simply impressive. To me, it's not about whether or not you can win a fight. It's just about expressing the body. And I think throwing a punch is a great way to do this. It's also a great form of cardio, hitting a bag. Grant has got loads of content on this channel all about how to throw a punch, loads of content on his own channel. And he's got a video coming very soon where he's going to talk through how he improved my punch over many, many years, very, very patiently. So stay tuned for that one. Next up is jump rope. I think everyone can benefit from learning to jump rope. All boxers, all martial artists practice jump rope. This is because it teaches them better footwork. It helps them to stay lighter on their feet. At the same time, it builds that ankle stiffness, which I've talked about in the past, is a fantastic and really important trait for general athleticism, for returning energy to the ground. At the same time, jump rope is great for your brain. It's great for brain plasticity. It's great for improving your ability to attend to your visual field. It teaches you rhythm and timing. And as you get better, you can start adding different skills in there as well, whether that's things like the double under. It's gonna look really great when you get better at it. And the fact that it gamifies exercise so that it's actually fun, so you're burning calories but having fun doing it, I think make jump rope a really powerful and useful tool. And this video is actually sponsored by Crossrope. If you're looking to get started with jump rope or want to take your training to the next level, Crossrope make the highest quality ropes I've ever used. The ropes use a proprietary material that ensures they're durable and don't get tangled. The advanced swing mechanics means that they move smoothly in the hands. You do really notice the difference. And the quick release fasteners let you swap out ropes on the fly. Swap out ropes, you ask? Dumbfounded? Well, yeah, because Cross Rope also provides ropes that come in a range of different weights, allowing you to train your muscles at the same time as your cardio. 
You can use a light rope and jump quickly or a heavier rope and turn this into a brilliant full body workout. Or you can attach the amp handles which will track your jumps in the app, further gamifying the experience of jumping rope. Cross Rope offers a 60 day trial period so there's no risk. Give them a try and if you're not completely satisfied, return them with no questions asked. And Bioneer viewers can also get 15% off a set by using the link down below and entering the code BIONEER at checkout. Thanks again to Crossrope for sponsoring the video, and now on with the show. The climb up is a movement from parkour that teaches you how to climb up onto something very, very quickly. This is how you mount a wall, but it's not about just getting over the wall, it's about doing so quickly and gracefully and without scraping your forearms. See, take the average person and ask them to climb a wall and what they're gonna do is put their forearms on it and then drag themselves up. It's slow, it scratches you up, it's generally inefficient. What Liam showed me was that the correct way to climb up onto a wall involves not putting your forearms on, not putting your knees on, but rather doing almost like a Kong vault, almost like a muscle up and launching your legs straight up onto the wall, kicking off the wall as little as possible, but probably to some extent. Being able to climb over a wall quickly is an exceptionally useful skill once again, whether you're in pursuit, whether you need to climb over someone's fence to get your ball back, whatever the case, this will make us into an urban ninja and this will train us to use some of that pulling strength and pushing strength that you might have been developing through muscle ups or through a host of other exercises. You can start training for this with the tactical pull up which is a pull up where you keep your thumbs on top of the bar which of course is more similar to how you would climb if you're climbing onto a wall or climbing into a window. Check out my Batman video from 2022 if you want to see Liam teach me how to do this movement correctly. The kettlebell swing is an exercise that goes in its entirely own category. This is not just a exercise, it's a skill. It requires you to hinge at the hips, to keep the body relaxed, and if you're doing the hard style, to contract right at the moment of thrust, similar to martial arts. It builds great grip strength, it teaches the hip hinge, it translates to much faster running speeds and jumping height. It really is a fantastically useful movement, and there's a reason that people talk about the what the hell effect with the kettlebell swing in mind most often. I saw someone in the comments describe the kettlebell swing as a ballistic deadlift. And if that doesn't explain to you why it's such a useful and powerful tool, then I'm not sure what will. It engages the glutes, which is fantastic if you're more quad dominant. And like martial arts, it's something that you can endlessly refine. It is the de facto kettlebell move. And I think that nearly everybody could benefit from incorporating kettlebell training into their routine because kettlebells build strength in those in-between areas that we miss with those linear movements. Kettlebells build toughness, which translates to things like grappling, to being more practically useful. I've made a video on this channel all about the kettlebell swing, so check that out if you want to learn more. Next up is juggling, which is something I'm still very rusty at. Liam's much better, but it's something that I think anyone can benefit from. Juggling is an inclusion on this list that is more brain focused, or more specifically, it's more sports vision focused. It develops your working memory as it pertains to monitoring your field of vision. It teaches you better hand-eye coordination, better rhythm, control, all those things. And this basically translates to better performance in a whole host of areas, whether you're driving, whether you're trying to keep an eye on your kids, or whether you're sparring or playing sports, keeping an eye on all the different players on the pitch. So there's loads of reasons to practice juggling. And this is something you can do when you're fatigued, on your off day, and it's somewhat physical. And it's something I do want to make more content on in future. I might even ask Liam if he'd make a video on that because, say, his juggling is really pretty impressive. I'm going to leave it there, guys, because this list could go on endlessly. But I hope I've illustrated to you just how many options there are for your training that go beyond just curling weights. This stuff will build muscle, it will build body awareness, it will burn calories, but at the same time, you're gonna be learning cool skills that you can actually use. You're gonna become more dynamic and explosive. I might make another list like this in the future because there's so much more we can touch on, whether it's things like swimming or roundhouse kicks or calisthenics movements like push-ups and pull-ups, whether it's things like hangs and squats. The more skills you learn, the more prepared you'll be for a whole range of different situations. You'll become an urban ninja and just generally a better mover, a more resilient human being. Let me know what your favorite skills to train are in the comments down below. Check out those links to all the different resources on this channel that teach you those skills. And yeah, keep learning.
If you want a training program that teaches you not only how to build muscle, burn fat, even train the brain, but also incorporates a number of these skills, then check out my ebook and training program, Super Functional Training 2.0. There's a link in the description down below. You get an 85 plus page ebook and over two hours of instructional video. But either way, guys, thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.